Hello scientists, we're going to do the 506 elasticity lab today. You're going to explore elastic energy by looking at how far rubber band stretches. Um, we're going to watch a video here that's listed on your lab sheet. Remember this lab sheet is available in doc sharing. So don't forget to download it from doc sharing which is in the upper right hand corner of your course page. So the goals of the lab, we're going to solve a problem using the scientific method, use the metric system in a scientific experiment, or watch someone use the metric system, and determine how elastic objects respond to force by stretching rubber bands with different masses. Before we get started too much, let's think about some elastic objects that you might have experienced in everyday life. This is one of those elastic bracelets that everybody has. I can stretch it and it goes back to its original shape. Here's an elastic rubber band that you might get on broccoli or some kind of produce. And I can, it's a little bit more stretchy than, say, this bracelet. And if I have a smaller rubber band, you can guess that it might even be more stretchy. So these are some things you might know from everyday life. You might want know one of these, too. It's a super ball or a bouncy ball. Um, they're pretty elastic. They squish when they hit the ground, and then they rebound to their original shape as they bounce. Something that's not elastic is this steel ball bearing. You know, if you drop this, it's not going to bounce. So this is not elastic where this is. So these are some things from your everyday life that you might use to try to um, understand elasticity in this lab. We'll watch the video and that will give us the goal of the lab. Um, I think you can answer this question. We just pulled some elastic materials, the rubber bands, and you can see that they return to their original, and you can fill in the rest. And we'll look at this data table here as we view the video that's at this link right here. So I've got the lab video up here and you can either watch it together on this video or you can go watch it on your own. I'll hit play and we might stop along the way and answer some questions. Hi, I'm Pat Keeney, an instructional designer with K-12. I'm here with my assistant to help you explore elasticity. In most lab work, advanced preparation is needed and safety is always important to consider. If you stretch a rubber band, what happens to it when you let it go? The rubber band returns to its original shape, of course. But if you stretch clay and let it go, what happens? It remains stretched or deformed. The rubber band has more elasticity than clay. That is, the rubber band goes back to the shape it was before. If a solid recovers its shape after being pulled, pushed, or stretched, it is said to be elastic. Springs bungee cords, and rubber bands all have elasticity. The important question to consider in this lab is, how do elastic objects behave when different forces are applied? You might want to write that one down. Use your prior knowledge to write a hypothesis that describes how a rubber band might respond to different forces. A good hypothesis should take the form of an if-then statement such as, if a greater force is applied to a rubber band, then the answer may seem obvious. And then you also want to add a because statement. Remember, in this class we use if, then, because for hypotheses. You want to explain why what you think is going to happen is going to happen. What science is behind your hypothesis. But how would we confirm this? Here are the materials for the lab. Before starting the procedure, we created a table with the following columns. Original length in centimeters, mass in grams, length with mass attached in centimeters, and change in length in centimeters. This table is in your lab sheet, so don't worry about writing this down. And many of the numbers are written down for you as well. But just watch how they set up the lab. You don't need to do this in person. You don't have these materials, so it's okay to just watch. Now it's time to set up. 
We can secure a dowel rod with a length of string attached to the edge of a countertop using tape. The dowel rod is secure and stable. There are more than 50 centimeters between the dowel rod and the floor. This space is needed for the stretching of the rubber band. We then tied a ring hook to the free end of the string. We measure the length of the hanging rubber band and record this value as the original length in the data table. Next, we attach the 100 gram mast and record this value in the data table. We hang the hooked mass on the free end of the rubber band. Again, we measure the length, this time with the mass attached, and record this value in the data table. We did a series of these experiments and in each case recorded data with different masses attached and with different rubber bands. The differences in lengths are easily calculated and recorded. Consider how the results should best be analyzed. You will be given data to work with. This should help you solidify your understanding of elasticity. So for this lab, you have it pretty easy. The data is already in the tables for you. Here's the elasticity of the thin rubber band. And here is the original length in yellow. Here's the link with the masses attached. They tried 100, 200, and 300 grams. So all you need to do to find the change in length is take the green number and subtract the yellow number. And I'm going to leave that up to you. You just need to grab a calculator, take 8.61, subtract 5.22. In this case, we get 3.39. And I'm going to let you do the rest of the numbers in this table. For the thin rubber band, we'll go to page 2 here and you can do the same thing. I'll make all these numbers green and all these numbers yellow. So, oops, sorry. So all you need to do is take these green numbers, that's the length of the mass attached, and subtract the yellow numbers for all these tables. Here's the common rubber band, or what you might know as like a regular rubber band, and then here's a thick rubber band with different masses attached. So to find the change in length, just take the green number, the stretched rubber band with the mass attached, just think of putting a heavy weight maybe, or heavy mass, something like this, ball on it and hanging it. Subtract this, uh, take this number and subtract the original link, the unstretched length. Now we need to graph our data. We want to plot mass against stretch length for each of the three rubber bands. So we want to use a different symbol for each rubber band and make a key so that we can tell the plots apart. So when you're done finding the length that the rubber band stretched in the tables above, you can come down to the graph here and you can start graphing. You can see I've put a couple points on for the thin rubber band. Remember, I'm graphing that last column in the table where you took the length of the stretched rubber band and you subtracted the original length to, to find just the amount it got longer and I've put on two blue points for the thin rubber band. And when I'm done here, I'll draw a trend line. And please use the line tool to just draw a line here. You can see that I've taken a line tool here from the shapes menu, and I've drawn a trend line that doesn't touch all of the points, but some of the points are above and some of the points are below, and you try to have as many points above as below. And make sure that your trend line goes all the way to the axis, because you're going to try to predict what would happen if we put 400 grams on this rubber band. So let's go down to question five here. It says, draw a trend line for the thick rubber band. Well, I did it here for the thin rubber band. You're gonna have to do it for the thick rubber band. Then use your graph to predict the thick rubber band's change in length if it had a 400 gram mass attached to it. Now we could do it for the thin rubber band because I drew a trend line for you, but it's your job now to do it for the thick rubber band. 
go up here and you need to plot the elasticity of the rubber band, the medium rubber band or the common rubber band, plot these values here. And you need to also plot these values here for the thick rubber band. And make sure you use different symbols or different colors for the different rubber bands. Maybe you want to use red for the common, common rubber band, or you, and then maybe you want to use stars or a different shape for the thick rubber band, or you could just use a different color. It doesn't matter, different shapes or different colors. Make sure you draw a trend line for the thick rubber band, just as I've drawn a trend line for the thin one here as an example. But you want to draw a trend line for the thick rubber band. Please also add your different symbols or colors to the key. I've started a key here. This is not on your lab sheet. You'll have to add it to yours as you add to the graph here. You'll have to plot these values on your lab sheet, but now you know how. You can see that the graph goes up by twos here, and the intermediate lines like right here, this is three, this is five. And that's it for your lab sheet. Once you finish the graph and you draw your trend line, you're done. Put it in the Dropbox and I'll grade it. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye. Have a great afternoon. Have a great day.